Yeah, and there's a new cost benefit analysis out that takes a deeper look at all of the options that have been put in front of city leaders with this bridge closed for months now. And of course, there is a balance when considering these options between longevity of the project, speed to open it, and of course, cost. And plenty of people are looking at those, hoping for a new and better way to cross the river again soon. A lot hangs in the balance as city leaders decide the fate of the West Seattle Bridge. The cracked hunk of concrete has been closed to traffic for months now, hanging over the Duwamish River. It's been okay, but it's been a real problem if you actually drive the car, having to go all the way down south to go back around. These detours come with their own problems for commuters and the folks living in the now high traffic neighborhoods. So officials are weighing what to do, repair or replace this damaged span. When we think about West Seattle uh, at HNTB, we think speed is absolutely first and foremost, but safety and durability can't go along with it. The city has a new cost benefit analysis exploring the pros and cons of options ranging from some sort of repair to partial replacement to full replacement. Some are faster, some are more expensive, and some more likely to need another replacement down the road. But this option got a lot of attention in today's task force meeting proposed by engineering firm HNTB, a partial replacement of the main span over the river with twin pre-built metal segments lifted into place whole. Our goal here is to have the new bridge open in the first quarter of 2023. That would be the target. And, um, and we feel that's feasible. It's modeled on an emergency project the company did on Lake Champlain in New York and Vermont. And they believe it could work here, open faster than other options and last decades. So I just can't think of a project in the country that's more worthy of a fast track replacement than this bridge. But plenty of questions remain, like the logistics of lifting these massive pieces into place and if the funding could keep pace with such an ambitious timeline. All while the old bridge sits quiet, free from traffic, cars, buses and emergency vehicles flowing elsewhere. So like I said, there are several options here, including shoring, some sort of repair, and then partial replacement and full replacement. That one repair option as soon as 2022, but it would only last a couple of years. Some of these though, more permanent solutions could take longer to open and last 75 years. There is a lot still to be discussed here. And a fair warning for you heading into the weekend, they are putting in those automated cameras on the low bridge. So if you've been sneaking across there, prepare to get caught. Starting in December, they're gonna issue warnings on those. And starting in the new year, you could get a ticket if you are crossing that low bridge when you shouldn't be. Live in West Seattle, I'm Michael Crow, King 5 News.